Okay, next up we have the cliffs. So we have Robert Stanton, or Spampton, no, I'm joking, um, <laughs> who is a graphic designer, Tyler, who is uh, who's Robert's kid, and Jess, uh, is that say Jess? It looks like Jesus from here. Uh, Jess, who is a copy editor. I have no idea who Jess is. <laughs> Not going to lie, I don't remember this story very well. Uh, so ever since his wife died in childbirth, Robert has been struggling to survive, putting aside his in or more in some more grief. <laughs> Robert has devoted his life to raising their son Tyler, a two-year-old ball of energy. Robert never stops worrying about his son and if he's doing a good enough job raising him. But some burden is uh, is lifted when his son picks out a new Tagalong Freddy toy at the store. The toy per... God, I wish I could read. The toy purports... What does purports mean? <laughs> the toy... The toy purports to watch your child and send you live updates uh, via a wristwatch that comes with a toy. Robert sees it as a win-win. Tyler gets a new playmate and Robert gets a some peace of mind uh, but when Tyler wa vanishes um, Robert wonders if the toy was really a kids and parents best pal or something far more sinister I actually quite like this story because it leads you on and then it has a uh, spoilers happy ending <laughs> um, so yeah so we got the, the Fredbear plush or monitor Fans will uh, recall a similar, albeit different, Fredbear plush that monitored another child, the bite victim from FNAF 4. And merchandise. This is the second instance of mass-produced toy being available outside of a Freddy's location. The first being the plush strap chaser, as we have already read. Um, new leads, of course, we have the Tagalong Freddy. Uh, a Freddy Fazbear plush toy that monitors children and sends a live update to a matching Tagalong time wristwatch. The updates can get quite specific, even noticing uh, act activities like finger painting, nap time, and meals. Okay, the braking wheel. So we have uh, Reed, Julius, Shelley, Pickle, and Ori. All of all of, of all of who are students. Um, we have Reed is tired of being bullied by Julius, a jo a jock who's always had it in for Reed. While Reed is struggling through their robotics class with his action figure size endoskeleton, Julius has managed to create what he calls an exosuit, a life-sized exoskeleton that can make him stronger and faster. After class one day, while wearing the suit, Julius threatens Reed again. But then Julius's exosuit malfunctions, and Reed looks uh, and Reed locks the bully inside it. Reed sees this as Julius's just as Julius's just rewards, and leaves him in the classroom, thinking he'll let him out in the morning. But is the exosuit really broken, or is it just responding to a different set of commands? Uh, the robotics class. Several of Fazbear Fright's stories uh, take place in classrooms, including some specifically dedicated to robotics. In these, uh, in in these settings, animatronics provide an interesting avenue to study the field. I love how I love how it's just like together forever. Um true true together yeah together forever is the, is the real tie in there. Um that is very true. Uh, I didn't think about that. Um let's just take a moment to appreciate the artwork here. The artwork is is so sick and I remember when this was like released to the public at first uh and everyone was going crazy over it because it was it was just wow. Uh, like imagine that being the cover of a book instead of um, instead of the cliffs. Like I, I feel like it would have gone a, a better impression. Actually, I feel like more people would have um, would have enjoyed it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it might be a bit too gruesome or whatever, um, especially for for like younger audiences. Uh, exosuit for his class project. Julius creates an exosuit, a metal endoskeleton. 
that or exoskeleton that a person can strap into and use to lift heavy objects, run faster, etc. It's pointed out in class that Julius's project uses the same frequency as Pickle's robot, making it follow any input from Pickle's remote. So we could say that Julius is in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> um, it's kind of like a springlock suit as well. How you can um, you can go inside of the exoskeleton. Um, IR and RF remotes, infrared and uh, radio radio frequency radio frequency remotes. I don't know. I don't know. Um, hopefully it, it describes it. Um, remotes that can control robots from afar. IR infrared. There we go. Yes, remotes have a shorter range and must be pointed directly at the receiver to transmit. RF radio frequency, yes, I banged it, I got it. Uh, I have a much longer range with a single that can penetrate doors, windows, walls, etc. Pickle's remote uses an extender to further the range of his remote. Yes, I do love, I do love this story. <laughs> it's great. Um, he told me everything. <laughs> Look at this art. It's so cool, Fazgu. Oh my god, Fazgu. Oh, I'm joking, that's not Fazgu, but... Um, I really do love this art, it's so cool. Um, I wish we got the full things, I wish they weren't cut off. Maybe one day we will get the full the full pieces of art, but um, yeah. He told me everything, so we've got Chris and Dr. Little. Uh, Chris being a student, and Dr. Little being the uh, edgy high school teacher. <laughs> edgy is, uh, is an understatement. So Chris is anxious to start high school, wanting to leave behind his working class family and immature friends to make a better life for himself as a scientist. But the first step to becoming a scientist is acting, uh, or sorry, is acing Dr. Little's freshman science class and joining the exclusive science club, reserved for only the best and brightest. On the first day of class, Dr. Little announces the annual lock-in experiment which is worth 500 points of extra credit and is all but required for those looking to join the science club. The lock-in seems like a life-changing experience, life-changing experience, and Chris is all too eager to get in on the action. Um, so, related elements, we've got bio, bi bleh, biology altering, oh my god, biology altering substances. I wish it said biological altering substances. That makes more sense to me, but whatever. Um, actually, no. Yeah, that's that's right. The Fazbo Frights series contains several references to mystery substances, such as Fazgu, the drop, the gumdrop nose, and sea bonnies. These items, all produced by Fazbo Entertainment, seem to alter the biology of the people they come into contact with. Yes, let's go. Um. They all seem to be related in some way. Well, kind of. They, they, the only way they're related is that they alter the biology of bodies and stuff. Uh, I didn't mention the puppet carver. So, um, is the puppet carver really Fazgu? Is it something completely different? Um, that's the real question. New leads. Freddy Fazbear Mad Scientist Kit. A mass-produced toy science kit containing Fazgu. Interestingly, Dr. Little assumes the class... Uh, oh, sorry, assures the class, it is most definitely not a toy, and if you treat it as one, it will be at your own, uh, at your own, at your own perk? Wait. I can't read that, I'm very sorry. It'll be, it, if you treat it as a toy, it will kill you, basically. Uh, Fazgu, a gooey pink substance seemingly capable of cloning when when, oh my god, provided, when provided with DNA, I have to get really close to my screen to read this, um, such as a tooth and a supply of living red blood cells. Huh, okay. Uh, organs seem to be sucked out of the host's body until all that remains of the host is goo. Uh, Dr. Little, he seems to know what the faz goo does, uh, what the Fazgu do, <laughs> and encourages its use among his students. So is he part of some larger conspiracy? I really hope he is. I really hope so. I really hope. 
I really wish there was there were, all of this was connected, but it it doesn't seem to be as connected as we hoped. Um, but whatever. Come drop angel, one of my favourite books in this series. Um, so come drop angel. Angel is a student. Ophelia is a student. They are sisters. Dominic is uh, Angel's crush or whatever. I don't know what they are. Uh, an assistant manager at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. So we got Angel is one month away from graduation and it can't come fast enough. Ever since her mum married her new stepdad, Angel's life has been taken over by Ophelia, her spoiled younger stepsister. Oh yeah, stepsister, yeah. At Freddy Fazbear's Pizza during Ophelia's extravagant birthday party, Ophelia is gifted with a birthday gummy, a life-sized modelled gummy treat. Angel is both mesmerised and disturbed by the gummy, especially after it starts to move on its own. Wait, really? I don't remember that detail. I don't remember the, uh... Oh, wait, no, the... Oh... Okay, not the gummy nose. Uh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I thought it said the gummy nose moved on its own, but no, the gummy girl, yes. Um, so it seems like Angel isn't the only gumdrop girl. Um, yeah. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which is active. Ophelia has an extravagant birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Uh, Biology-altering substances. Again, two in a row. As noted, several Fazbear Fright stories are focused around biology-altering substances, including the gumdrop nose, Fazgoo, and Sea Bonnies. Um, New Leeds Birthday Gummy, a living gummy candy unlike any other. The treat is created when a person consumes the gumdrop nose, which changes the consumer's DNA into a gummy substance. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza offers them as a grand uh, finale treat at birthday parties. And complicit Fazbear Entertainment um, employee. Ah yes, yeah, I love this this detail. Dominic is noted to be the assistant manager at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and he seems to be fully aware of what's happening to Angel. What's most, uh, what, sorry, while most Freddy's employees are unaware of the the nefarious things that often happen in the pizzeria, Dominic seems fully complicit, um, if remorseful. Yeah, that's a very weird detail in the story, and I it's what makes me really like the story as well, because it has that kind of twist. You know, it's not a massive twist. It's not like a big story twist, but it's just a little twist. Like, how does Dominic know? Why is Dominic crying? He knows what's going to happen. Um, yeah, this is very weird indeed. So then we've got Sergio's Lucky Day, which is also a great story. I wish we had a picture for it, but that would be too gruesome. Um, Sergio, uh, who is a project manager at architectural firm. Uh, Dale, who is a senior manager at an arch architectural firm, and Sophia, uh, who is unknown, but I believe it's Sergio's old crush. Um, one, one thing I just realised, actually, is Dale. Isn't that an old... Isn't that a name from FNAF VR? Isn't that one of... The, I feel like he is the senior manager at, at Fazbear Entertainment. Or not Fazbear Entertainment. I wanted, like, the boss of the VR game. Or something. I feel like Dale... I feel like I've heard Dale in the original... Like, game series. Anyway. That's something to point out. Um, Sergio is feeling pretty out of luck. The new promotion he received is too much work for too little pay. His SUV dies on the way home from the job. And he's stuck trudging through downtown in the rain looking for a phone. Which is when he finds Lucky Boy. Lucky Boy is a small figurine who wants to make big changes in Sergio's life. But the more Sergio l listens to Lucky Boy, the more he realizes he wants to, or sorry, he needs to take a more hands-on approach to happiness, even if it means taking a hacksaw to his life. Um, <laughs> I like that ending. Uh, Balloon Boy. The Lucky Boy figure bears, uh, figurine bears resemblance to Balloon Boy and similar animatronics and even laughs in the same manner. Uh, illusion discs question mark uh, Sergio becomes more entranced by the lucky boy and more uh, detached from reality as the story goes on even altering his body by himself it's unclear if lucky boy contains some form of illusion technology as seen in to be beautiful um, that's a weird detail there 
but others notice Sergio's at-home plastic surgery only after he leaves Lucky Boy in the hall. Oh, really? Wait! This entire time I've misinterpreted Sergio's lucky day? Really? So is it... Is Sergio's lucky day really just like to be beautiful? Is is it really like um, Sergio ha... Uh, not Sergio. Lucky boy has an illusion disc in him. And whenever Sergio is close to lucky boy, um, he sees himself as attractive when actually he's really soaring off his own body. Um, oh, that's such a cool, oh my god, how did I not, how did I not know that? How did I not, oh my god, I'm such an idiot. I'm, oh, oh that's, that's actually cooler. I actually like that ending more. The fact that he walks away from Lucky Ball, from Lucky Boy, and then he gets revealed as this gruesome, you know, um, cacophony of, uh, human... <laughs> of just flesh. <laughs> um, Lucky Boy, a small electronic figurine bearing some resemblance to Bloom Boy except a sign in his hand says, I'm a Lucky Boy. Sergio finds the toy on the street. Lucky Boy gives Sergio uh, vague advice on how he can change his life for the better, mainly by following his desires, no matter the consequences. Which, of course, you shouldn't live life by. <laughs> okay, what we found... Brilliant, brilliant, um, brilliant art here. <laughs> I love it so much. What we found. Hudson is a security guard and Barry and Duane are in the military. Um, Hudson is a great, uh, sorry, Hudson, Hudson is grateful when he scores a well-paying job as a security guard at the Fazbear's Fright Horror Attraction in town. But that's about the beginning and end of Hudson's good fortune. Hudson is burdened with a dark past that seems to poison everything he touches in the present. A dark past he'll be forced to confront during his uh, midnight shifts at Fazbear's Fright. Uh, Fazbear's Fright horror attraction, a haunted house of sorts set up to look like an old Fre uh, Freddy Fazbear's pizza. Real artifacts from the restaurant's history are being brought in to make the attraction feel authentic. Epic. Uh, Springtrap. Hudson faces off with Springtrap throughout the night, even noticing that there is a dead body within the animatronic. Yeah, and, and uh, I believe when he touches the flesh of the dead body in the animatronic, that's when all of the crazy stuff happens. That's why other people don't react to it. Um, Hudson Hudson, oh, sorry, is Hudson the night guard from FNAF 3? In general, the events of the story seem to follow the events of FNAF 3 almost to the, la uh, to the letter, right down to the ending. Hudson also experiences hallucinations throughout the night while dealing with Springtrap. I don't think, I don't think Hudson is, I don't think Hudson is the night guard from FNAF 3, but it, it, there's definitely a lot of parallels, a lot of parallels. Um, so yeah. Okay, moving on to The Puppet Carver. Also a pretty good book. Not as good as Gumdrop, uh, Gumdrop Angel, I don't think. Um, the Puppet Carver. There's a lot of names here that I just don't remember. <laughs> um, so we've got the main three, kind of. Jack, who is the owner of Peter Playground. Porter, who is a handyman and inventor. Sage, who is a custodian and a writer. Uh, and then you've got Edwin, who's a cook, uh, Angie, who is a waitress, Becky, who is a homemaker, and Tyson, who is a student. I believe all of these are kind of, uh, are people that Jack tried to, tried to make up for, or whatever. I don't remember. I don't remember these people very well. Uh, I remember reading their names, but I don't remember, you know, what they do. Um, Jack is a franchisee of the floundering pizza playground and animatronic pizzeria he employs porter as handyman and animatronic technician uh sage as custodian edwin as cook and angie as waitress there we go yeah of course uh, off the clock porter has invented a new machine the puppet carver that can carve low-cost animatronics for the restaurant of a simple block of wood but he hasn't quite worked out all the kinks yet when a demonstration of the machine falls or fails 
Uh, Jack fires the staff in a fit of anger, determined to declare bankruptcy. Later that night, Jack hears a ticking coming from inside the machine. He enters the machine, trying to find a way to turn it off, and nearly dies when the machine turns on. But after his near-death experience, he feels like a changed man. Bro, he did die. <laughs> he did die. Um, mediocre melodies. Pig Patch, or an animatronic much like him, a pig uh, strumming a banjo, appears uh, in, in Pizza Playground. Um, yeah, there's a lot of correlation with um, with Pizza Simulator. Uh, new animatronics. Baron Von Baer and an unknown bird animatronic are described in the story, and the bear is even recognised by one of the restaurant's young patrons. Um, pizza Playground. Yes, an animatronic pizzeria franchise. It is unclear whether this franchise is related to Fazbear Entertainment or if it's a competitor. True. True, yeah, there's, there's actually... Yeah, that's very, that's very true. There's no correlation to, to FNAF here, really. Um... Puppet Carver. Uh, peppered throughout the story are excerpts from Sage's novel about a wooden puppet's journey to becoming human. I'm surprised they didn't know anything here about the slimy, the, like the substance. It's very weird. Very weird. Are we all making making this story about Fazgu up? <laughs> is Fazgu actually in the Puppet Carver? No, I, I believe it is. I believe he does die, and then he becomes a changed man from Fazgu. But it could just be... This could be a completely rubbish theory, actually. <laughs> Imagine if none of that actually has any relevance. That would be mad. Anyway. Okay. Got two good stories here. Uh, Jump for tickets. Colton, uh, Aiden... Uh, yeah, sorry, Colton and Aiden are students. Mike is a mechanic. Mr. Harrison is a shop teacher. And a shop teacher? What? A shop teacher. What is a shop teacher? Uh, and Colton's mom is a nurse. So Colton's mom doesn't make enough money to afford the newest gaming console, so Colton decides to earn the console himself by winning tickets at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The highest ticket generating game in the arcade is the ticket pulverizer but the game is rigged to favor little kids colton does some research into the game and makes a plan to break into freddy's after hours to fix the ticket pulverizer for good um so we got an active freddy Fazbear's pizza the freddy's location is an active hub for kids and teens arcade games we have references to other animatronics that appear in some of the arcade games mentioned such as Oh god. BB's Bull Drop and DD's Fishing Wait, did they change it? Oh my god, they changed it. They changed it. Wasn't it called DD's Fishing Hole? Oh my god, they changed it. They ch <laughs> They have they must have changed it. They must have seen the mistake that they made. Oh my god. There's no way. Did they change that? Ah, oh, that's so funny. That's so funny if they did. Um, the D DD's game might be a reference to the fishing hole in FNAF World. Oh, never mind. I don't know. I swear it was called DD's fishing hole. Or am I literally just thinking of the FNAF World one? Oh, well. Uh... <laughs> I swear it was called the fishing hole because we were joking ab around about it in in the audiobook. Anyway, never mind. Um, new leads: Coil is the birthday clown, a clown animatronic with a uh, gaping grin, googly eyes, spiral limbs, and a lanky body dressed in lemon and lime coloured stripes. It doesn't speak, but you can hear its jingly bells as it draws near. Uh, the animatronic seems to be sentient or to have some sort of ch child monitoring capabilities based on its actions in the story. Which is why a lot of people think it's um, it's like the puppet. Uh, it's a parallel to the puppet, but um, I don't think it's it's uh. Don't I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm stuck between the puppet now and Ennard because uh, it looks like Ennard, or it looks like the the original version of like the Ennard mask, but um, but it's it acts like the puppet. So yeah, 
uh, we got the Ticket Pulverizer, an arcade game consisting of a sealed transparent booth where players must jump as hard as they can within the time limit to generate tickets. Players may keep the tickets they catch. The game typically can uh, costs four tokens, but one visit is free on birthdays. The voice actor for Kuro is the birthday clown recording the message that starts the game. That was a very odd detail to put in there. Anyway, Pizza Kit. A very cool... Oh, I wonder how they're going to describe this one. <laughs> so we got Peyton, Marley, and Abigail, who are all students. Mrs. Crutchfield, who is a home economics teacher. Peyton's mum, who's unknown. And Miss Bryant, who is a Freddy, Freddy's factory manager. Okay, so we got Peyton has recently befriended Marley, one of the pretty popular girls in school. Marley can be a bit uh, rebellious, and during a trip to the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Kit factory, she urges Peyton to break away from the tour group. When separated from the group, Marley seemingly falls into a vat of, of boiling pizza sauce and doesn't return. Peyton is afraid to get in trouble, so she doesn't tell anyone what happened, but her guilt might just eat her alive. <laughs> eat her alive, I like it. Um, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza... Uh, a past one. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is referenced as being nostalgic, though active locations aren't mentioned. Uh, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Kit. Uh, a popular list of customizable components for kids to make their own single serve Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And finally, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Kit Factory, the factory where Pizza Kit components are made and shipped to stories and Freddy's locations. Kids can also tour the facility and make their own pizza kits. I am very surprised at how they describe some of these stories because pizza kit just really isn't as it seems as it first seems. Um, firstly like there's a there's a whole nightmare segment. Um, she eats like a pizza that has like flesh and and like tongue bits and um, yeah and blood. Um, but it isn't actually that. It, it's quite literally, it's just a pizza, but it's her mind doing things. I'm surprised it didn't go through, like, uh, the psychological horror route. Um, it was all a prank at the, in the end. Uh, I'm surprised they don't mention any of that, really. Um, but hey, pretty cool story. 